I want to share with you the number one best food for toxic kidneys. In order to understand that, I have to give you a little background information. But the big problem when you're diagnosed with kidney disease, especially if it's end stage kidney disease, is that they don't really have any good solutions that give you a good prognosis. You know, they might say, well, you have to get kidney dialysis, you know, and that's just terrible, terrible to go through that. And the prognosis from that is just not good. They're, they're not giving you any some natural solutions. The thing with the kidney is that it's a filter. So any drugs that they give you is going to be more toxicity to the kidney. So when we're dealing with a damaged filter, we need to use something natural that has virtually no side effects. So this kidney filters out chemicals, pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, heavy metals, plastics, excess minerals. It recycles a lot of things too. It's very, very efficient. It gets rid of excess sugar. And of course, if you're eating a lot of sugar, it destroys the filter because diabetes is the number one cause of kidney disease. It also gets rid of excess protein byproducts. So when we eat protein and that breaks down, it goes through a chain reaction of things that end up with ammonia, which is very, very toxic to several parts of the body, especially the neurons in your brain. And this is why if someone has too much ammonia that goes up into the brain because it's too much in the blood, they can end up with dementia, all sorts of really terrible things. Normally what happens is the body has this urea cycle where this protein that turns into ammonia then turns into a lesser toxic thing called urea. And that's supposed to be you know, excreted through the urine. And so the liver is also involved in this process as well. And if you have a really toxic kidney, chances are you also have a toxic liver because they work closely together. Unfortunately, you are swimming in a sea of toxicity, our environment. I mean, there's over a thousand new chemical compounds created every single hour, okay? So we're just getting hit from every different angle. So we need healthy kidneys, we need a healthy liver to deal with all this toxicity. Also, the kidney is the main organ that helps activate vitamin D. Uh, the liver is involved too, but the kidney is even more important in the conversion of the inactive D to the active form of vitamin D. And you know how important D is. And like I said before, diabetes is one of the main big causes of kidney disease. So what are the symptoms of toxic kidneys? Okay, well, you can have gout, which is uric acid building up, usually in your the joint of your big toe. And that mainly occurs because the kidney is not able to get rid of this uric acid effectively. Kidney stones, where you have this super concentrated calcium oxalate stone that develops in the kidney. You can prevent stones by consuming enough liquid so we don't have this super concentrated um, solution. Puffy eyes. You can look at someone's face and just look around their eyes and you can see kidney problems. So if it's puffy, especially underneath and on top, usually they have kidney issues because the fluid's backing up. They also have edema in their lower ankles. When you press on the lower ankle, it leaves an indentation. They might have itchy skin. They might have glucose in the urine or protein in the urine. Their urine might smell very, very strong of ammonia. And like I said before, if the kidney was doing its job, you would just have urea but if there's too much ammonia, this whole breakdown process is not occurring because the kidney is damaged. And ammonia, like I said before, is very, very toxic to the brain. Your urine might look very, very dark and foamy. That usually means that this filter is not filtering. Just like if you were to change the oil filter in your car, if you haven't changed it for, for a couple of years, it's gonna be really, really dark and filled with all sorts of things. Now, the foamy part is usually too much protein in the urine because it's not being recycled properly. And you may even experience high blood pressure. Okay, so now the question is, what is the best food out of all the foods that can support toxic kidneys? And I looked at what the kidney is supposed to do, what occurs when you have toxicity in your kidneys. And this is what I came up with right here. Bok choy. Now, why would bok choy be the number one food? Well, first of all, it is a cruciferous vegetable. 
And that means that it has enzymes to help with something called phase two detoxification. Now, since we're trying to detoxify poisons from the body, consuming more cruciferous is going to help you in that process because it takes these poisons and it turns them into harmless particles. So it takes the stress off the kidney. Number two, it's high in potassium. Potassium is very protective to the kidney. A lot of times people will say, well, you need to avoid sodium. No, you need to increase potassium because potassium is a mineral that's very protective. It's also high in magnesium, which is also protective. And the thing about bok choy is it has no oxalates, like things like almonds and spinach and a lot of other vegetables and legumes and beans and grains and things like that. They're high in oxalates. And eating too many foods with oxalates could cause you to create kidney stones. So it's low in oxalates and it's low in protein. So if you have protein in the urine, you don't wanna be consuming a lot of protein. Why? Because it's going through. You wanna consume less protein, but just higher quality protein. But with bok choy, it hits all the different factors. So you can just steam it, put some garlic on it, maybe a little sea salt, and it's actually quite healthy. All right, number two, consume apple cider vinegar with some water, okay, through the day. What is that going to do? The acetic acid in apple cider vinegar is kidney protective. It'll help you, okay? It will also help your blood sugars, which again, is the big cause of kidney problems in the first place. And of course, I didn't mention this, but you would definitely want to get on the ketogenic diet and do fasting for sure. Okay, lemon juice. Why? Because lemon juice has citric acid and that can reduce the risk of getting stones. Also, lemon juice, even though it's an acid, turns into an alkaline solution in your body and that can help with gout too. Because anytime when you have these uh, uric acid crystals that are depositing into the joint, if you alkalize the body a little bit, it'll stop that process. Okay, celery juice or just celery by itself, okay? It decreases ammonia and urea. It helps detoxify this ammonia and it helps decrease the risk of stones. Number five, lower the amount of protein, like I just mentioned, to about three ounces of protein per meal, especially if your protein is high in your urine. All right, number six, make sure your diet is high in potassium. You need big salads, small to moderate protein, huge salads, no grains or sugars or anything like that, but a high potassium diet would be protective to the kidney. Like I said before, it's not about lowering your sodium because you need certain amounts of sodium and chloride, but it's you really need the ratios correct. So we usually need to increase the potassium and not really touch the sodium. Distilled water is water without the minerals and the other chemicals. When you consume distilled water, it can help detoxify a lot of poisons in your body. It pulls things out. That way you can take the minerals that you really need without the minerals that you don't want, like excessive amounts of things like calcium and things like that. So distilled water is really good for uh, kidney stones. It's good for gout and toxicity in general. Like the worst thing you could do is to drink tap water when you have bad kidneys because there's so many chemicals, fluoride and chloride and all sorts of things. Now, number eight, probiotics. Your gut contributes to making ammonia. So if you were to just consume either foods with probiotics like kimchi or sauerkraut or take a probiotic, that could take some of the load off the kidney, okay? Same thing with the liver. You could take like milk thistle. That would be a good thing to do to take more stress off the kidney. Zinc has been known to decrease uh, ammonia and urea in the urine. So just make sure you have enough zinc in the diet. And lastly, there's a great product by a company called Standard Process. It's called Arginex. I'm not affiliated with that company, but this product is something I used to use in practice. Arginex is basically arginase, which is an enzyme that helps convert some of this byproduct of protein into something that you can get rid of. So it's great to detoxify the kidney and especially the biochemistry that occurs at the end of this urea cycle. Okay, so Arginex is really good for gout, it's good for kidney stones, it's good for toxicity in the kidney, and you would take a good amount of this 
uh, per day. So you can look it up, stand up process and order it. Now, before you go, I have some exciting news. I finally, after many, many months, actually it probably took us a year, we finally upgraded our new Dr. Berg app that you can download for free. And this will allow you to carry me around with you. So anytime you have a question, you want to do some research on a topic, you will be able to get access to all my videos because you'll have the app on your cell phone.